How's it going traders? It's the Puppa Wall Street back with another weekend review. Hope you've enjoyed your three-day weekend. Today we're going to look at my top 10 charts going into the rest of this week. Keep in mind we are having a holiday shortened week so there's only four days out there for you short-term weekly expiration uh, options traders. But if you can, please make sure you like and subscribe uh, with the button below. Uh, so you can get these actionable trades as soon as they come out. And if you can, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about these chart review videos. And also, as a tip, uh, feel free to level up and watch these videos on 1.25 or 1.5x if you feel like I'm talking pretty slow. I try and uh, go through these charts as clearly and not as slowly, but as, as easily as possible so you're not missing any news so let's dig into the charts uh, but before we do that i just wanted to make sure if you are not following me on twitter uh, make sure to check out my twitter it's at the pup of wall street and uh, on the weekends uh, generally saturdays and sundays i will drop about 15 to 20 charts since we had a holiday weekend i dropped more so you can see uh i've got let's see 10 charts here from one post uh, Lucid, Qualcomm, JD, Vail, uh, AR, FANG, AMAT, MOS, LAC, and AMD. And you'll also see these charts uh, in the uh, thread as well. So I keep it easy. Uh, like I said, this week there were uh, a lot of charts that I just took a look at. So here's some more, some uh, energy names, Callan. Uh, here you got Zim, the shipper. This actually went out this week for my play and pick of the week for my weekly newsletter. Uh, Kroger, Deer, DE, uh, NVIDIA, FCX, Micron, Occidental Petroleum, it's another oil and gas play. And also did some, some crypto plays as well. Some Ethereum, Polkadot, Solana, and then finally Caterpillar, which also has a, a really nice setup. So um, I always do my top 10 right? But there's always going to be more. It's sometimes very difficult to narrow it down to 10, but I do my best. Uh, but in any event, I always have these additional charts that I post on Twitter on the weekends. And uh, these are always weekly charts. And then throughout the week on Twitter and also on my Instagram, same handle, you can get the 30 minute charts that I post Monday through Friday. Uh, I'll generally post between four and six charts a day, just giving you Sometimes an update on some of the weekly plays that I'm looking at, but also sometimes new things pop up. You know, we have earnings that are coming up, so that's something that you might want to take a look at. And of course, I'm just always uh, doing my pre-market and post-market scans. So I'm always looking for new opportunities and new ideas to trade. So let's dig into the charts, as I mentioned before. Sorry for rambling. I just thought it was important to mention that. So today, we're going to go over AMAT, uh, AMD, AR, FANG, JD, LAC, LCID, MOS, QCOM, and VAIL. So let's take a quick look at AMAT. We're going to be looking at the daily chart for each ticker. And so you could see AMAT had a bullish engulfing outside day on Friday. And we broke over the 168 extension at 164.94. So that was a really nice close that we got. I'm watching for a continuation move up to potentially 176. That's going to be our 200% extension. But we also have a 4236 from a prior swing high, swing low Fibonacci extension at 175.58. Nice peekaboo breakout here on RSI. Uh, the squeeze is already dissipated and starting to curl back up, but no squeezes to note as that was already done. And MACD has been curling and crossing for the last uh, couple of weeks. Got a little bit of a crossover here on Friday. So yeah, that's AMAT looking pretty good going into next week. Here is another semiconductor. So uh, let me zoom this out a little bit. You can see we had a falling wedge breakout here. Uh, it's getting a little congested uh, with the chart, so I apologize on that. Um, I made a note last uh, couple of weeks that I'm going to start doing my charting on the actual calls, uh, just so you get a little better sense of how I look at the market. Um, so yeah, I mean, it looks pretty 
pretty much like a, an ABC correction here. And I'm wanting to see if we can get back over this 1618 extension at 137.45, then we possibly can move, make a move back up to that 145.45 region. We did lose 50 on RSI. There's no squeezes to note, and MACD did cr curl over and cross down. So what I'm going to be watching, I don't want to see a move under 122. I do want to see a daily close over 137.45. And again, just to reiterate, if we do get that, that close, then I'd be watching for a move to 141, 145, 151, and potentially back up near the highs at 161. Next up is AR. This is Antero Resources. Uh, so I believe another oil and gas play. And you could see that we had a nice consolidation breakout uh, back here in September. Uh, nice breakout retest, right? Another higher low, higher low, higher low. And then we started to come into this 2170 resistance level. Had three candles basically get rejected off of the top. And now we were working our way back down to retest the prior breakout, which is what we saw here. So we got our proper retest. We got a two candle retest. And now we're getting another series of higher lows and higher highs. So watch for a potential. Let's grab this channel tool here and we'll draw out a channel here. And you can see we had a false breakout right there. And uh, we're holding in the top side of the channel. So as long as we hold that center channel here in the, inside the channel, then I think we test 2170 this week. Uh, RSI back tested 50, started to bounce. We have room to run before we get overbought. We had a little mini squeeze that fired off. That's four dots in, and we had a MACD curling cross back here. So ultimately, I want to see a test of 2170. If we get that breakout over 2170 this week, then I would watch for a move. Let's see. Let's do a FIB extension. I would say a move to 2377 and then 2604 for ticker AR. That's Antero Resources. Next up is Fang, not to be included, not to be uh, confused with the uh, acronym for Facebook, uh, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. This is a ticker Fang. Uh, this is Diamondback Energy. This is another energy play. Uh, I have been watching this for a couple of weeks now. I did have us in a wave one, two, three with a triangle here, four. Turns out to be a broadening formation. We came right to the top of it last week. We actually closed and broke above it on Friday. So we broke that 1272 extension at 123.82. We're coming up to potentially that 1618 extension at 131.58. We're just coming into overbought territory here on RSI. And the squeeze that was setting up, uh, it's still rising but we might be closer to the top than we are to potentially uh, a, a bigger breakout. So just be careful here. I, you know, I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks. I wanted to put it on it because it does look strong still. And this is not a, uh, an insignificant breakout. This is a pretty significant breakout. So I want to see, do we possibly get a retest on the broadening formation and a bounce higher? Or do we come into the 1618 extension at 131? 58 and then potentially come back and retest 123.82, that 1272 extension. So that's what I'm going to be watching for ticker FANG. That's Diamondback Energy. Next up is JD. So last week I had mapped out all of these different uh, possibilities for JD. We had a nice uh, breakout here on the 10th, the 11th. We had a nice push higher. On the 12th, we came right into that 50% retrace level and got rejected, came back down. We kind of started to follow this yellow path. So let me just remove these two paths here. And uh, you could see we're, we're basically what happened was we got rejected by the supply zone. So, you know, I'm anchoring uh, basically from the low back here. And you could see that as price came into this supply zone right here, all the buyers pretty much from that zone are bag holding down here. And so what happens is from a psychological standpoint, when price comes back into the zone near where they bought, 
since they were negative down here and they're maybe break even or slightly positive, they may take the trade off in, in the supply zone. That's where all the supply is. And usually what happens is, you know, they're deep, they're basically dumping their shares, they're dumping their supply on the market. And then in turn, you get a rejection off of the supply zone. And that's exactly what we saw. So a lot of the times what I want to see is as we come into the supply zone, I want to see consolidation into the supply zone. And basically what that means is that we're absorbing the supply of the people who bought over here down into this zone. And then once you build out, or excuse me, once you uh, absorb all of that supply, then you watch for a breakout higher to the next supply zone up above. And I believe if I re-anchor this to the high here, you could see that we have a, a little bit of a gap here, right? So you have that supply zone here, you have a supply zone here, and then you have this void where there's very little, um, there's very little volume. And that's basically because we had a gap down right here. So what may happen is if we come up and we start absorbing the supply, if we get a break over 8104, which is the 618 extension, we can see a nice five point pop right here to 8616. Uh, so what I would be watching for as an options trader, and of course I'm not a financial advisor, so this is certainly not financial advice, but from my perspective as a trader, what I would be looking for is on a break of 8104, I'd probably be looking at the 85 calls about two weeks out. You might get a fast move or you might get just like a slow grind higher. But to me, that looks like a pretty decent play. We got a MACD crossover, no squeezes to note, and RSI is holding over 50. So JD does look pretty interesting coming into this week. Next up is LAC. This is Lithium America Corp. And uh, again, you know, a lot of uh, metals and... Um, Resources like lithium, like copper, have been moving. So right now, what this to me looks like is a falling wedge. And uh, it's one of my favorite types of plays to uh, to watch for. And uh, if you look a little further back, you could see we had a nice cup and handle breakout. And now we're back testing that, that handle breakout here, or excuse me, that neckline breakout right around 2673. So if we zoom back in on this falling wedge, the falling wedge is coming right into that zone. I mean, we had a basically almost a hammer candle into there. We had an oopsie breakdown hammer candle there. And we had a pushback higher to the trend line. And we're still consolidating. So a couple of scenarios. Um, let me actually re-anchor my volume tool here to the prior swing low. That'll give us a better indication of where our supply is. And now... What, what I might see here is a couple scenarios. So we're inside this falling wedge. So we might come back down and test, you know, here. We might come back down, down here and test here. Or we might just consolidate a little bit and then, and then break out. And so like some of the other names that I just talked about, these falling wedge breakouts, I really love them as a play. Uh, but if we were to take a look at this and say, you know, well, where, where's a potential entry if we get a breakout over that falling wedge, well, I would look for possibly a move over 3190. And then if we take the, let's go back here and uh, 3936. Yeah, so we've got a 1272 extension right above here at 3345. Just gotta be careful with that level there. But if we can get over that level, then we can move back here to that 1618 extension at 39, 33. And that's obviously where we struggled uh, back here. We had a false, well, we had a true breakout and then a spinning top reversal and then a gap down the next day and basically got rejected off of that 1618 extension. So I'm going to be watching the move back into that level because a break over that and we should start to uh, move uh, considerably higher. A couple of things to note. We do have a lot of room here on our side to move, right? And we also are setting up with a six dot squeeze here and a MACD crossover. So going to keep a close eye on LAC uh, this week. If it doesn't make a move this week, uh, certainly going to be go back on my radar next week if we can hold over 26.73. So next up is LCID. This was my pick of the week last week. And uh, yeah, it was actually a, it was a pretty decent pick. Let's see. If we go back to Monday, we had about 
oh, I don't know. I think it was about a 17% move last week. So, um, yeah, not a, not a bad move, but look at where we got rejected, right? Um, right off of this, well, really that's not anchored properly. So let me anchor this properly. So let's remove that anchored VWAT. Let's anchor to the previous swing high. It still doesn't change the story. We're still getting rejected right here into that swing high, right? Anchored to the swing high. Swing high anchored VWAT, we came right into it. Spinning top reversal, Nice uh, push down and bounce right off of our moving average cloud. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going to be watching Lucid very closely this week. Uh, tomorrow, I think Tuesday. So Wednesday is the 19th. Wednesday, the lockup period expires. And so I believe the last lockup period, we saw a pretty significant fall. Now, I would expect something similar possibly to happen so I would say this is very shortable under 30, uh, 35 uh, 79. However, you know, surprises tend to happen. So I would be watching for a move over 46.73 to the upside, uh, potentially, if that's what we see. But, you know, in actuality, this is really still, for me, it's just stuck in this range here. A um, couple of things to note. We did get a MACD crossover back here. We are quite a number of days into a TTM squeeze, and we're holding over RSI on 50. So i um, not sure when earnings is. Let's see. Earnings is going to be February 15th, so earnings is a little bit out. Ultimately, I, what I want to see out of Lucid this week, I want to see us hold 35.79. If we can hold 35.79 post uh, lockup period expiration, then I'm just going to be watching for a break above 46.33, and then I'd just be targeting the highs near uh, $58. And you can see I have a target. If this is indeed our wave four bottom, I do have a target between $71 and $80 on the upside for a final wave five. Okay, next up is MOS. This is a mosaic company. Not exactly sure what they do, uh, but... From a technical perspective, I do like what I'm seeing. And so kind of looks like a, a cup and handle here, right? Where this being our, uh, our cup. And then this being our handle right here. And if that is the case, then we did get a break of the neckline right here. So going to keep a close eye. I want to see a daily close over 43.25. And then what I'd be watching for are my extension levels. Uh, looking for a move to 45.87 and then 49.22. You know, we are just coming into overbought territory here on RSI. You can see the squeeze fired back here. Look at the move that we got off of the squeeze, right? So the squeeze probably possibly already done uh, with that MACD crossover back here as well. So don't want to, you know, really look at the squeeze for more upwards momentum. However, if we do get that rejection off of 43.25, I would watch for a back test on the neckline and watch for the bounce back higher. Uh, that's an opportunity to take a trade there. If we do get that pullback from here, I would come back up to 43.25. You could take the break out there. Or if we get a daily close earlier on the week and we don't get the, uh, the pullback, get that daily close over 43.25, then I'd watch for a move potentially to 45.87. Next up is QCOM. This is Qualcomm, another semiconductor. It looks like I've got three semiconductors on the list today, uh, AMAT, AMD, and Qualcomm. But it's because, uh, you know, semiconductors actually have been showing some good relative strength to the market. Uh, we do have a nice uh, slingshot squeeze setting up here. Let me get that fixed for you. And uh, yeah, so you can see we had a downtrend. Uh, actually, this was an earnings gap right here. And so if I remove that anchored VWAP and I anchor to the candle post earnings breakout, look at what we have here. Every single dip to the anchored VWAP measured to the, the gap up candle uh, we're buying opportunities, right? So bounce, bounce, bounce. And now, you know, we're pretty much in a consolidation zone here. Uh, I can just uh, 
put that out. Let's see. All right, so there's our consolidation zone. And I'm not mad at it. You know, I don't mind seeing a post gap up with that big of a move. You have to expect consolidation after it. And now we've got earnings coming up on February 2nd. So we're just two weeks out. And look at all of these candles coming into 188.90. That is my entry right there. False breakout, false breakout, false breakout, false breakout. So I'm waiting for a daily close over 188.74. That would be my entry for Qualcomm. And then I'd be targeting 196, 200 for that psychological resistance, and then ultimately 213 uh, to the upside. And last but not least is Vail. Ticker V-A-L-E, I believe, ooh, I don't want to misquote this. I think this is also, it's either a copper or maybe it's a steel. I think actually it might be a, a steel play. I might be wrong, but don't quote me on that. But I know it's a materials play. Uh, so you could see if I zoom out, it's a pretty nasty chart. Um, so what I'm looking at here is we are starting to test the gap down right here. And we started to fill the gap right at the 382. We got rejected pretty close to it, right off of 1582. Um, but it, we did get a TTM squeeze firing. We we're five dots into that squeeze right here. We had a MACD crossover here, and we're not quite overbought on RSI. So watch for a break over 1582. You could target 1726. 1870 and then 2075 to the upside so those are my 10 charts for this week of course keep in mind the other charts that i posted on twitter uh certainly go ahead and give those a a, a peek as well um but yeah i mean like i said I mean, if you if you can and you're not already subscribed make sure you like and subscribe uh, like this video and subscribe to my youtube channel uh, i do post uh, weekly chart updates uh, and i also post some intra-week uh, short-term videos, usually five to 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, I mean, I hope you've enjoyed this. Leave a comment below. It's super important for me. It really helps uh, signify to the algorithms on YouTube that the, the, uh, the content is quality because people that leave a comment generally, well, positive comment, right? Generally uh, means that the, the video was pretty good. So um, really hoping to keep continuing to put out really good content for you all. And uh, your uh, comments and advice certainly will inform how I do these videos moving forward. So thanks again for your time. I really certainly do appreciate it. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed your three-day weekend. And I look forward to seeing you all in the markets again this week. Have a great week trading.